This is Carly Ma for Sonic Zen, and I'm here on the beautiful island of the gods, Bali, at the Anand Ashram, the haven for spiritual travellers. And I'm having a conversation with Swami Krishna Anand. When we left off last, we were talking about the vibration of words and how they affect the atmosphere and the Sanskrit language. So we're going to now talk a little bit more about the Sanskrit language. Yes. Yes, actually, uh, basically, uh, Sanskrit language has got a uh, connection, uh, a very deep connection with the ancient languages of Middle East, like, for instance, Persian. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, Persian and Sanskrit are very close. Even, very interestingly, the name of the deities are the same. In the ancient Persian language, there is uh, Zarathustra, Zoroastrian religion and all that. Even the name of the deities are the same, and uh, it's very close, very, very close. So... Sometime, uh, the, the historians in about 100 years back, they thought really that the Aryans, the so-called uh, people who spoke Sanskrit in India, they came, they came from Central Asia, but actually this, this uh, theory is now no more supported. So it can be a same civilization, can be same roots in Persia and part of Egypt and India. They all grew on, uh, during the same time. Time period. Well, you know, you only have to look at the races and people's yes. faces. Mm. Um, like your own face. Yes. Yeah. You could so easily be an Aboriginal, an Australian Aboriginal. Aboriginal. Yeah. People have told you that right. before. Yeah. I, I, there's actually or this, Spanish. <laughs> there's actually this um, Aboriginal elder. He's a yes. beautiful man. You might have met him sometimes. I, um, Uncle Bob. Uh, yes, I met him. I met him. You, yeah, nice man. If you put a cowboy hat yes, on, you'd yes. look very much alike. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're reminded of the beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, you know. And yeah. you see that, you see that amongst mm. the people. Yes. It's just, you know, some of the Balinese look t incredibly Indian. Right. And then yes. last night I met a Balinese who looks so Chinese. Chinese, yeah. So it's just, and Japanese. Right. You often like right. the, the lovely man that was doing the Sufi, his yes. Japanese wife, I thought, yeah. wasn't sure whether she was yeah. Korean, Japanese, yeah. or Balinese. Right. Yeah. 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 So. To think that it's just the oneness again, isn't it's it? It's oneness, it's oneness. So it's it's reflected in the language, in the similarity of language. It is reflected in anything. And now most of us speaking English, we are actually, uh, you know, re expanding that oneness. We are expanding that oneness. I'm, I've got nothing against English. I mean, it is good language. It is, it is good as long as it can help us to become one, to when you become united. Yeah. 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 What I was going to say is. In the Sanskrit language, mm -hmm. do you see any words that come from Sanskrit in English? Oh yes, because that's why it's called uh, Indo Indo European languages. Yeah. So a lot of words. I have a friend. You must have met her a few days back when she was here. She's from Poland, and she says there are so many words in Polish language that are exactly same like Sanskrit. Oh wow, that's yeah, I, I, I'm not reminded of certain words, but like mother. Mother, it's matra, matra, matre in, in Sanskrit and uh, in English is matra. And then Latin would be very similar to very Sanskrit similar. as well? Yes, yes, Latin, mother, father, pitra, father, you know, so very similar. So when we talk, I'm going to go really, going to really go below yeah. the belt now. Yeah. When we're talking about this, it makes me wonder... How did the division ever happen? It makes me feel really sad. Yeah, yeah. How did this division come apart, do you believe? I think it's uh, ego and property. Our, our craving to own something. Which is just the biggest joke ever. The biggest joke ever. Because, ever, you yes. know, one puff and it's gone. Exactly, exactly. So, again, the whole thing about having children was also created from there. The whole notion that I must have somebody to take care of my property when I left, when I leave the world. So you, you can't really even let go you when you die. Let, you can't let go. And that's why it came about that, okay, in, in the East, for instance, you must have a son. If you don't have a son who will take care of your property because uh, the, the, <clears throat> the daughters normally, when they marry, they live with their husbands. So in those uh, days, Sun was an important issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was reading in one of the local papers yeah. here, yeah. I think, 
uh, uh, this woman's plight mm. because she was the last of yeah. the lineage. Yeah. So mm. there was some mm. special reason why she couldn't let go yeah. of her name when she yeah. got married. Yeah. She had to find some really special yeah. man yeah. that would take her name and yeah. she can't find anyone that would... So she can't get married, yeah. but she really wants to have children and... Mm. That's her. <clears throat> really wants yeah, to be a, yeah. in a family, right. but unless this man, I um, match can find a man, I'll take her name. And thinking, <laughs> it's just a name. It's just a name. It's just a name. But it's the energy that yeah. counts, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, the greed and you know, trying to hold on to something. Yeah. When you die, everything is. You've got everything here in this world. You never brought anything. Yeah. I have a Balinese <laughs> friend here who. Um, married a, a, a Hindu woman, mm. so he yeah. uh, he came from Java, yeah. so he has mm. become, in, coming to mm. her family mm. here, mm. Mm. and they've been living in this compound, yeah. and his wife's been looking after the parents, yeah. and yeah. the whole family's there. Yeah. Anyway, the parents have died, mm -hmm. but the girls didn't inherit anything. So all the inheritance has gone to the brothers, mm. and now this home that they've set up, mm. Mm. and been living in all this time, they're going to yeah. get kicked out. And you just think, Crazy. well, how could a brother do that to a sister mm. anyway? Mm. There's room for everyone. There yeah. has been all along. Yeah. There must yeah. be more room now if the sure. mother and father are gone. Sure. Must be sure. more space. That's right. Yeah. Not less. Yeah. yeah. It just, it's just all so strange. It is strange. Well, in the, in the olden days they had this, you must have heard in India they have uh, this, what they call a dowry or... Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that was a... Originally it was a very good system. Yes. Originally it was a very good system, so... Before the parents are dead, once uh, the, the daughter gets married, she gets her share of the property. So the original system of dowry was uh, dividing property at the time of marriage. So once the parents are dead, uh, there can be no problems between the siblings, among the siblings, because uh, there was a, the issue was that the son should inherit the house. So when a, a daughter is getting married, she should get the same amount of property as the house is worth. Uh, while the parents are alive, to avoid any conflict in, in, in a later date, you know. But it becomes a tradition, very dirty tradition. So it became a very dirty tradition which should be left now. But originally it was good and, uh, well... Yeah, when, you, when, when we ask about how did the vision happen, when brother can turn against sister... Yes. Well, sister can turn against brother. Right, right. Does this and that's greed, blood. Greed, yeah, yeah, greed, greed and... Yeah. Yeah. Attachment. Well, this is just making me feel heavy now, so we'll, we'll move on a little bit. <laughs> we should speak Sanskrit. <laughs> yes, make it lighter. <laughs> we'll have to put out the vibration. Right, yeah. So maybe there's a special mantra or a chant you put out to yeah. uh, dissipate greed and... Uh... Yeah. I think I, the, the, that's why Ma, uh, Gayatri is called Mahamantra. Actually, for Westerners who cannot really chant a lot of mantras. Gayatri is the most wonderful mantra. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. And I find the Gayatri, when you're actually doing healing yeah. work, like yeah. when, do they chant it when they're doing their Reiki? Yes. It's, that's just, having it chanted yes. over you is yes. just the most yeah. beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. So, um, when we're talking about vibration mm -hmm. never ending, mm -hmm. what do you think, what, what is the expanse that it moves into? What, where do you think? But this is, this is how we are connected with the farthest star and farthest galaxy. That is how we are all interconnected through vibrations. And uh, once our vibrations increase, because now they can, uh, after math, I think they, was, they were mentioning about, uh, uh, you know, measuring our vibration based on electrical impulses. So it can be measured so many millivolts or whatever, you know. So once you reach certain state, 2,000, 5,000 millivolts, something, you can actually connect yourself instantly with the farthest galaxy. And this is what is happening in the eclipse, when all those eclipses, that the, we see the eclipse only so many minutes afterwards, eight minutes or something afterwards, because uh, for the light to come and for us to see that eclipse, we are not seeing it real time. It takes eight minutes for the light to travel to us. But if you are sensitive, you can actually feel the effect of eclipse at the time when it is happening. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see, uh, feel it eight minutes before the thing yeah, happening. I know that one. <laughs> and you know that, right? And of course, the, did you hear about, did you read about this cat in, in also tsunami, the elephants? Oh, that right? was a beautiful story yeah, about the elephants. Yeah, the elephants, they, 
they, they knew that tsunami was happening and they started running away to the mountains. And also a cat because in Beijing, uh, she dictated that the house will crumble down and there, there was something wrong with the construction of the house. It was not earthquake. Something wrong with the construction of the house and she made sure this cat that everybody from the house comes out from the house and then the house crumbles. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. So you can really actually... Because they're using thing. cats and dogs and monkeys now to detect people having yes. epileptic fits and heart attacks and all sorts of things, aren't I, they? Yes. Cancer? There's a cancer-sniffing yes. dog? Yes. I, I'm, I'm sure they can feel more because their mind is at a very embryonic, embryonic stage, yeah? yeah, very small mind, and that's why their senses yeah. are more developed. Yeah. You know, sometimes my beautiful little dog, I have mm-hmm. to show you a picture of him, mm-hmm. Sometimes he just sits and just yeah. stares yeah. at me. Yeah. And he can just sit there staring yeah. and staring mm-hmm. and staring. Mm-hmm. And it's really quite loving. It's just right. staring at me. Yeah. It's, you think, I wonder what he's actually <laughs> seeing. <laughs> but those things are like, you know, when, when you are, uh, we tend sometimes we are in a very heavy mood or something and we are depressed or anxious or thinking about something, you know. And uh, when you have some people around you, you feel uplifted. Yeah. Don't you feel like that? Yeah, yeah. So these animals can actually absorb our negativities at times yeah. and make us feel uplifted. So yeah, yeah. we are actually interaction with them, yeah. interacting with them. I remember once I was went. It was one of the silliest things I've yeah, done. Yeah. I was up north in Queensland and right. I went to this crocodile uh, uh-huh. park, uh-huh. which actually was very beautiful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It had lotuses, mm. lovely deckings and lotuses floating. Yeah. But it actually gave a lot more meaning to Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme, because yeah. underneath the lotuses were the crocodiles <laughs> and some of them were huge. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I went over this bridge. I'm standing on this bridge and it was the biggest, oldest crocodile mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I think it was something like 24 mm. or 28 foot long. Wow. Uh-huh. Huge. Yeah. And I'm just staring at it. It's sort of staring yeah. at me. I yeah. don't know where it was looking. And then I thought, oh, you know, I, I yeah. wonder what it's like to tune into a crocodile. So yeah. I did. Mm-hmm. It was really hard to come back out yeah. again. Yeah. It was the most, oh, I can't, heaviest, yeah. prehistoric. Yeah must have taken me into some part of myself that was yeah. just like not formed or it's the weirdest. Yeah. So I advise all listeners, <laughs> do not practice this tuning in to crocodiles at home, That's please. <laughs> so do you think I was just like tuned into it's like, they say they've got a very small prehistoric brain yeah, still, haven't yeah. they? Of course, the reptilian brain, the, uh, the middle part of our brain that is... Uh, we inherit that from me, a lot. You know, I feel a bit yeah. thingy just of course, talking about of it. Of course, yeah. of course, you can feel it because uh, all the experiences are there. Yeah. Whatever we have gone through from time immemorial, from whenever, you know, it's all recorded there. And actually, uh, our present body is is uh, made up of all those experiences collected. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, like a yoga, and they said that most of yoga, the yes, hatha yoga, emotions, the physical, yes. is all based on animals, isn't right, it? Right, right. And, and uh, the Tibetan yoga is all animals. Yeah. All, they even have the animal's name. Yeah. Yeah. They also Sanskrit, Shishan, uh, yeah, Shalabhasan, you know, insect, and all those. Yeah, everything has yeah. a, well, not yeah. everything, but most yeah. of them are. Most of them are, yeah. yeah. So we have a lot to learn from sa- animals. Yes, a lot of to learn, and also to let go of those tendencies, because... Some of those tendencies are carried away, carried, carried uh, forward to this incarnation. So some of these tendencies have to be let, uh, we have to let go of them. And that's how sometime we have to imitate those uh, things. You know. So like the flight, fright response yeah. is very animalistic, isn't it? It is, it is. That's why meditation comes into that because meditation gives us the ability to pause and think. You know, you have seen that movie, uh, Siddhartha, by Herman Hesse. Oh, it's a beautiful movie, movie, yeah. yeah. So, it, basically that, just to pause and think. That makes me human, that makes you human. Because animals are reactive, and we can be responsive. We can pause, think, and then we can say, okay, I'm not going to respond, I'm not going to react towards your unkindness. Or Actually, this is one of the biggest hmm. gifts of meditation, yes. isn't it? Yes. Or meditative yes. life. Not to be reactive, not to be learn a, to yeah. respond. Yeah. And yet some people c- 
can't discern the difference between reacting mm-hmm. and responding. Mm-hmm. And it's the same as, uh, you know, I, for a long time, well, I'm a pretty judgmental person. Mm-hmm. So a long time, I battled with this judgmentality. Mm-hmm. Is that a word? Judgmentality? Yes. It's, it's judge mentality. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> and then I realised, well, I'm not always judging. Mm. What I th- I'm judging what yeah. I'm judging. Right. That we have to have discernment as well. Yes, yes, to be discreet. Yeah, so discernment, there, yes. discernment yeah, and yes, judgment yeah, are two yeah. totally different aspects, different. but they're very close. It is close, but when you're judging, actually, you are, uh, you know, you're condemning. Yes. And in, in, in discretion or what is the word you discernment. use? Discernment. Discernment. You're not condemning anything. You just say that. So we okay. have judgmentality and discernmentality. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, it, it's a, and, it's, and it's only like a thin hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A thin hair also, but uh, it depends on you. Like, uh, I cannot take cold water because I know if I take cold water and I'm getting some problem with my throat and all that. So... I, I'm not judgmental about uh, cold water. I cannot say that cold water is, is bad. No. It is not bad, but just that it's not right for my body. So that is discernment that is uh, exactly. indiscreet. Yeah. But I'm not judgmental towards water. Uh-huh. So how do you think people with meditation mm-hmm. can train themselves more mm-hmm. to be less reactive mm-hmm. and more responsive? Well, basically, if you are meditating properly, and that's what I was saying that uh, the 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 uh, what do you call the research done by TM people transcendental meditation Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was a good one because it is already proven that when you eat for instance your mind your brain is registering that you're eating only after 20 minutes so how people uh, overeat some people overeat you know it calls you back to the it, 100 chews yes, doesn't it yes exactly 100 chews yes and Mahatma Gandhi would chew at least 32 times the number of the number of uh, your, your, what do you call it? Teeth, teeth yeah. yeah. So this is a good thing. and that, that's call it attitude. It, attitude, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like these <laughs> strange right, words. Right, right, but it is, right, eating yes. with attitude. Attitude, yeah. yeah. And that's how you become more responsive. That's how you become more responsive. You know what food is good for you, for your body, without being judgmental. And it lets the body know yes. what nourishment to receive exactly, from the food as well. Exactly. And this is the whole thing about yoga also, because a lot of people, they do yoga very dynamic, which is nothing wrong again. Again, nothing wrong. You can do yoga very dynamic, but uh, to, for the mind to register, all these uh, postures of yoga have to be slowed down, actually. That well, that's what I was thinking. Yes. I was putting neutral spaces yes. in. yeah. So that the body can register it. Register, yes. Yeah, and then it takes the change. Yeah, yeah. I, I often found with people that, I mean, I've got nothing yeah, I've done out yeah, of yoga, yeah. but some of the yogis that I've taught yoga yeah, to yeah. have only been doing dynamic yeah. yoga, mm. their bodies end up with a lot of injury. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A lot of injury. It's and not yeah. accepting the change. Right. And also the it's mental. Again, it's a silent space, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. And the mental attitude is changing our mental perception is sending our whole thing and this is how the thing about uh, being responsive comes about once you do it slowly and you're registering you can you have time to pause and think what's happening mm. so that's the mental response yes Aha, good and um, so the reactivity and response mm. we've covered mm. and the attitude in which you do yeah. things yeah. so actually you're responding before you, before you act, yeah. the response comes yes. before action. Yes. Yes. Most people would think that action was a response. No, that, that's reaction. That would be reaction. Yeah. yeah. If action as a response, that would be reaction. So that's because, that's really yeah, what we've got like, to, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. So because a lot of the um, you know pe- people don't realise that they're still coming from that limbic brain mm. with most of the way they react to life. Right, right. And what's it? I love that saying, if you always do what you always did, you'll always mm. get what you always got. <laughs> yeah, nice saying. It's yeah, a good yeah, saying, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not changing anything. You're just uh, following the fixed pattern. Yeah. And that's what our conditioned mind would like to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, it took me a long time to get the what 
I read that book of mm-hmm. Scott. Is it Scott M. Peck? Scott Peck, yeah. The Road yeah, Less, Less Travel. Travel yeah. Such a oh God, yeah. it's showing our age, isn't it? <laughs> Such a long time ago. I, yeah. And I never really got it until the last ten yeah. years. That, yeah. oh, that really is the Road Less Travel Less is travel. the opposite road to what most yeah. people travel. Sure. Just. Sure. It's our beliefs. We just keep sure. travelling down that same sure. way and we believe sure. this and that's it. Mm. And there's no way to mm. change it and that's mm. the way it's been. It's the way it's always going right. to be. And, right. yeah. and this is how people react always. I've been like that. If you are good to me, I'll be more, uh, much more good to you. I'll be better than what you are to me. You know, this is a reptilian brain, you know. So all our relations are based on that. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. The one thing we can learn from the reptilian brain, yeah. though, is patience. Patience and because you know, you know that a crocodile can mm. just if you run away from a crocodile and you climb up a tree, yeah, it can just sit there and wait. I think it's like something yeah. like 11 days, <laughs> just sit there with just its sit. mouth open, just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> that, Not, that, that's a good lesson. <laughs> doesn't twitch, doesn't move a muscle, yeah. just sits. That's that's, that's one lesson. thing we can take from that's our limbic lesson. brain. Yes. Maybe maybe the limbic brain, if we use it the way it's meant mm-hmm. to, can help us to meditate, yeah, to sit yeah. in a patient space. Oh, yes, yeah, that is that is how uh, the limbic brain in Sanskrit is considered the tamasic. It, it, it creates the tamasic qualities in us. Say that again. What the... Tamasic. T A. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. And tamas is to make you lazy. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, certain time you have to make yourself lazy. Yeah, we wait, were talking about that a couple of episodes back. Right. That, that right. We think lazy, we see ourselves as lazy if we're yeah. not doing. So even yeah. when we're having our rest times, we're still doing things. Doing something, doing something. Or our yeah. mind is. Yes, when you're resting, you're sleeping. That is, during resting time, you have to be in that state of consciousness, tamas, otherwise you're going to rest. Yes. You're going to sleep. And then we go into Turiya again. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think we've come okay. to a time of rest now. Thank <laughs> okay. you, Swami. Thank you.